Hi there, this is Thiru, Atra Fitbi and welcome back. Today I am starting with a solving the coding into problems from the lead code and I have listed about 150 problems topic wise and I am going to solving that. I have arranged the list topic wise and you can find that list from the github link I have provided in the description. So starting with the very first problem from the list that is do some problem which is from the arrays. If we go through the problem statement. We have given an array of integer that is numbers and an integer target. We have to return indices of the two numbers such that they add up to the target. We can assume that each input would have exactly one solution and you may not use the same element twice. You can return the answer in any order that is the indices can be any order. Let's go through the given two examples to understand the problem statement better. In the first example, the input array is having four elements that is 2, 7, 11 and 15 and the given target is 9. So here we can easily guess the pair that is 2 and 7, 2 plus 7 gives us 9, right? So the indices will be 0 and 1. Similarly, in the second example, the input array is having three elements that is 3, 2 and 4 and the given target is 6. Here the elements will be 2 plus 4 is 6, right? So the indices will be 1 and 2. It's very easy and straightforward to guess the pair of the elements when the input array is very small. But if you think the given input array is having hundreds of elements, it's difficult to guess, right? So let's think about the solution programmatically how we can write. I am popping up the same problem statement here and also the example given. I am putting some more elements in the given input array so that our solution should work for the any input, right? So now our input array is having total 8 elements and the target is 20. Let's think about the naive solution for this problem. Always remember if you are solving a problem in an interview, don't think about the optimal solution at very first. Gradually you can optimize your solution based on the interviewer inputs and the naive solution makes you comfort and easy to go towards the optimal solution. This rule not only can be applied in an interview but also applicable whenever you are solving a DSA coding problem. Coming to the solution, at first we can take each element at a time and we can find its complement which will give up to the target, right? So here if we start with the first element that is 5 then we need to find its complement 15 right which will give us a target 20. For that we have to start searching from the second element towards the end of the array. Basically to perform this we need two loops in the first loop we will pass the searched element and the second loop will give us its complement or the pair which will give up to the target. So here in the example we are illustrating we have found out the first element from the first loop that is 5 and its complement 15 from the the second loop right and their indices are 0 and 5 respectively. So now I am just writing the solution with using the two sum method which will find the two indices for the target sum. Don't worry about the full solution or the python code you can find that in the github link I have provided. For now you can only concentrate on the different kind of solutions we can find out for this problem. So here in this method I have declared initially an array called indices. We will use this array to store the indices of the pair we are going to find. So once we find the solution we will return this array and then we are using two for loops here outer loop we are using to iterate each element and the inner loop we are using to find its complement so inside we have a if condition here we are checking i not equal to j because we cannot use same element as a pair and then we are checking if the j element is equal to complement of the current element or not so at any time if these two conditions are satisfied then we got the required solution now we can discuss about why we are talking this solution as a naive solution or not an optimum solution so in this solution overall we have two for loops and they are nested. Suppose we take the length of the array as n then we will have total iterations as n into n right. Hence in the worst case the time complexity of this solution will be o of n square which is not an optimal one always. And when we try to execute this solution on lead code you can see it took runtime about 91 millisecond and also you can see it beat only 5% of the solutions the remaining 95% of the solutions are optimum than this one. So now we can think about how we can optimize this solution. So the first thing to get rid of this n square or the polynomial time complexity we have to remove this nested loops right. For that what we can say by using any sorting algorithm we can sort the array first which usually will have the n log n time complexity and once array is sorted we can search for the pair which will give up the target. So for searching again we can go for a binary search or we can use a two pointer technique. 
Since here we carry out two operations that is sorting and searching separately that is without nesting. Hence the time complexity will be O of n log n plus O of n log n which is again a O of n log n time complexity. So this is one of the solution which is better than O of n square right. Again here we can also replace the binary search operation with a two pointer search technique which will again reduce the time complexity from n log n to n. This will only optimize the searching part but overall solution again the time complexity is n log log n only ok. So for the two pointer technique instead we have to take two pointers the first one pointing to the very first element of the array and the second pointer points to the last element of the array and then we start moving these pointers towards the middle until we will get the sum up equal to our target. So at each step if our sum is less than the target we will move the left pointer towards the right and we will check the sum again or else if our sum is greater than the target then we will move the right pointer towards left and again we will sum up and we will make these comparisons until our sum is equal to the target. And finally whenever we find our target we will stop this iteration. There is very small disadvantage of this solution I will tell you when we will program this logic. Still this solution is better than our first approach as it is not taking any polynomial time complexity. Now let's see how this solution works through a dry run. So when the iteration starts the first pointer points to the very first element that is 2 and the second pointer points to the last element that is 15. So the sum is 2 plus 15 is 17 which is less than the target 20 right. So now we will move our left pointer towards right one step and then it will point to the next element 3. Now the sum is 18 and it is still less than our target. So we can continue this process until we will match our target right. So if we increment our left pointer next it will point to the 5 and there it is it is matching with the target right. So here the current indexes will be 2 and 7 right. But but here we can observe that disadvantage even though we find the solution. The original indices are different in the given input than what we found from our solution right. These indices are the places got changed because we sorted the array. So to find the original indices or the index values back we need to store somewhere value along with index so that we can extract back those index values once we got the right pair. Here we need to perform one more step extra to extract back those values right but still we can extract them back linearly by using some extra space. So we can take a two dimensional array where in the first row we can store the values and in the second row we can store the indexes of those values. So once we got the pair we will track back those value and indexes from this two dimensional array. So now let's we'll try to implement through the code for this two pointer approach. So to not to take much of your time I'm just popping up the solution or the implementation for this two pointer approach. As discussed I have created a two dimensional array to store the values and their respective indices to track back them later. Then I have sorted the array using arrays.sort which is a inbuilt function in Java for arrays. And we can assume for this sorting it will take O of n log in time and then next we have declared the two pointers left and right which are initially pointing to the 0th index and the end index of the array. Coming to the right part of the code where we have written the actual logic to iterate with the two pointers. So here we have a while loop for the iteration. We will stop the loop when the left reaches to the right ok. Then we are calculating the current sum using the left and right pointers. Whenever our current sum matches with the target we are just returning the pairs from the two dimensional array. If it is not matching then based on the current sum we are just moving the left and right pointers. So in case if we are nowhere finding the pair then we are coming out of the loop and we are returning just the default array which is having the indices minus 1 and minus 1. When I have tried this solution on the lead code it just took 9 milliseconds whereas the previous solution took 91 milliseconds right and it was able to beat 54% of the solutions whereas the previous one able to beat only the 5%. So definitely this n login solution is better than the n square and still can we optimize this uh, o n login solution to at least linear that is n o of n yes we can do that. For this we can take the help of a special data structure called map. Usually these maps are available in most of the programming languages either in the python right. This map data structure has key ability to store the key value pairs as an entries. The map data structure also having one more special ability that is whenever we search for an element in a map it can return that element in a constant time. 
Coming to our problem use case, we can put the array elements as a keys to the map and we can put the indexes as values. Then we can iterate through the map by searching the complement of the every element. So whenever we find the right complement as a key, then of course we find the solution in one iteration. So let's go through the dry run of this solution using the map. So initially the map will be empty. We will take the first element 5 from the given input array and we will search for its complement in the map. We will ask the map, hey do you have the key 20 minus 5 that is 15 and then map will search for the entry 15 and it will tell like no boss I don't have any elements right now. At this point we can take the element 5 and we can insert as a entry to the map along with the index as a value. This process of searching and inserting the entries will continue until we find the right pair. So here when we reach as the element 11 at the index 4 then we will get a reply from the map yes found the name as a second entry and from there immediately we can return the indexes of those elements that is 9 and 11. So here the index for 9 is 1 and the index for 11 is 4 and we are returning that array as a resultant. Also we can stop the process here no need to search for the remaining elements right. So with the 4 times search in the map we are able to find the result. So very much straightforward we can say the complexity that is the time complexity for this solution is O of n with extra space we are using for this map data structure. Let's go through the code for the solution quickly. Inside the to sum method I have started declaring the map. Here map is a interface and the hash map is a implementation for the map. Then I put a iteration over the array using the for loop. Inside the for loop I am just calculating the complement that is target minus current number and inside the map I am just checking using the method contains key map dot contains key this complement. If this contains key method returns true then immediately we are going into the if condition and returning back the result that is map key and from there we are returning the indices one indices is present in the map as a value and another from the for loop that is the current index if we take and run the solution on the lead code you can see it just took 2 milliseconds and it beats 99% of other solutions this is what we are actually looking for and we achieved that using the map data structure right that is all about the to sum problem. You can mention your thoughts in the comments if you have other alternative solutions or other approaches. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.